Okay. The registrars of uh, the register, of course, of uh, the director's holdings and, uh, in at and attendance of the board meetings are also available for inspection during this meeting in accordance with the provisions of the Companies and Allied Matters Act of 2020. For anyone uh, who wishes to, of course, confirm that, you're most welcome to inspect them. Now, allow me, before we also continue, to introduce to you your directors. Uh, starting in the following order with Mrs. Lola Cardoso, who is here with us today. Mr. Joseph Mbulu. Mrs. Obafunke Alade Adeyefa, who you will see on the screen. Mr. Richard Borrett, also on the screen through the feed. Mr. Ian Klein, also on the screen, Mr. Kenroy Dowers, also on the screen, Mr. Paul Kokoricha, Mr. Taimor Labib, also on the screen, Mr. Emeka Ogbeche, Mr. Mark Patterson, also on the screen, of course, to my immediate right is our Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Emeka Konko. And to my immediate left is no, someone who is no stranger to us, Mr. Shomuiwa Shonubi. And of course, I am humbled to introduce myself as Beatrice Hamza Bassi, the board chair of your company. I will now call on our company secretary to read the notice convening the meeting. Notice is hereby given that the 52nd annual general meeting of Union Bank of Nigeria PLC will be held in the auditorium Stallion Plaza, 9th floor, 36 Marina, Lagos, on Tuesday 4th of May 2021 at 11 a.m. to transact the following business. Ordinary business to receive and adopt the audited group financial statements for the financial year ended 31st December 2020, together with the reports of the directors, auditor, board appraiser, and statutory audit committee thereon. To declare a dividend for the financial year ended 31st December 2020, to elect and re elect directors, to authorize directors to fix the remuneration of the auditor to disclose the remuneration of the managers of the bank, to elect or re-elect members of the statutory audit committee. In compliance with the pu public safety directives of the federal government of Nigeria and the Lagos state government on mass and public gatherings on account of the COVID-19 pandemic, and also the corporate guideline, co the guidelines of the Corporate Affairs Commission on holding annual general meetings of public companies using proxies. Attendance at this meeting shall be by proxy. Shareholders are advised that meetings will be streamed live via the link that has been provided by the registrars. And voting at the meeting shall be through proxies whose names are provided below. Mrs. Beatrice Hamzabasi, the board chair. Mr. Emeka Okunkwo, the CEO. Mr. Eric Akidro, shareholder from Ibarra. Mrs. Bakari, shareholder from Ogu State. Mr. Innocent, P. Umokotia, shareholder from Abuja, Mr. Joseph Okilano from Ilori, Mr. Farouk Umar from Kano. A member of the company entitled to attend and vote at the meeting is entitled to appoint a proxy to attend and vote in its, his, or stead. A proxy need not be a member of the company. A proxy form is supplied with this notice. For Compensate proxy forms to be valid for the purpose of the meeting, they must be duly stamped by the Commissioner of Stamp Duties and deposited at the Office of the Company Registrar, Cardinal Stone Registrars Limited, 335-337 Haber Macaulay Way, Yaba, Lagos, or sent to registrars at cardinalstone.com not less than 48 hours before the meeting. The cost of stamping was borne by the bank. Any member may nominate a shareholder to, for election as a member of the statutory committee by giving notice in writing of such nomination, attaching the curriculum picture of the nominee to the committee at least 21 days before the annual general meeting. 
shareholders are enjoined to know that the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria require members of the statutory committee to have basic financial literacy and an ability to read financial report statements. The register of members and transfer books closed on the first, from the 1st to the 8th of April, both days inclusive for the purpose of preparing an updated register of members. If the dividend of 25 copper per 50 copper ordinary shares re share recommended by the board of directors is approved by members at this meet annual general meeting, the dividend payments will be made today, 4th May, to members whose names appeared on the register of members at the close of business on 31st of March 2021. Pursuant to Rule 1912 sub rule C of the now Nigerian Exchange Limited rule book, kindly note that it is the right of every shareholder to ask questions at the annual general meeting and in writing prior to the meeting. We therefore urge that questions to be, sub be submitted to the committee not later than 22 weeks before the date of the meeting. Financial statements. Shareholders could, can also access the financial statements on the bank's website following the link provided therein by order of the board dated the 23rd day of February 2021. Thank you, Mr. Shonu. I will now, with your permission, report the affairs of the company during the financial year under review. The statements of the board chair and that of the chief executive officer appear at pages 8 to 10 and 12 to 15 of the 2020 annual report and accounts which we've already circulated. In order for us to have more time to entertain and answer your questions on the annual report, may we, as in previous years, Take both statements as read. Thank you, shareholders. However, as we've done before, the CEO, of course, and we all here are available to answer your questions on the contents. Before we proceed, I further crave your indulgence to make a few comments on the unprecedented year we've had leading to now. 2020, all of us sitting here will bear witness and testament to the fact that it was unprecedented in every respect. In fact, the implications were far-reaching on our business, our households, and our ways of life. As we gather here today, we're still feeling the effects of events that started last year and which continue. The year started with history-making no-deal Brexit, as we all know it, with us hearing that UK was going to be exiting the EU by the end of the year. We thought that was the big news. Very soon thereafter, we started hearing news of a virus that was in China. Before we knew it, it had hit our shores and was affecting us in ways that we never anticipated. Around the same time, all in the first quarter of last year, we saw Saudi Arabia and Russia getting into a price war that led to a crash in global oil prices. And then the United States and China started their own war and all of this had ripple effects on our, on our own livelihoods here in Nigeria and fundamentally on our business. In fact, these incidents affected the Nigerian economy in such a fundamental way that our GDP contracted by 1.9% for the full year. This was the sharpest decline since 1991. Against all of these odds, Notwithstanding all of these headwinds that we face in 2020, the, uh, with the coronavirus and the global and national trends, we as your bank focused on seeking out every opportunity we could find in the market to align our human and other resources towards maximizing the opportunities available to us. Thanks to the strategic investments that we made in prior years, we were able to in our digital platforms and the structures, of, we were able to get over 70% of our workforce to very swiftly transition to start working from home, relying heavily on these digital channels that we invested in. And in fact, our customers were able to continue to get served seamlessly, and they did not suffer disruptions as a result of our ability to transition. Our commitment to deliver this high-quality earnings that we're seeing now remains unwavering. 
and I'm very pleased to announce that the bank delivered a very resilient set of results in 2020, notwithstanding the challenging operating environment and the difficulties, the difficulties that we faced as a result of the pandemic. Indeed, our overall performance demonstrates this resilience and the ability to adapt to constantly evolving macroeconomic environments to deliver sustained high quality earnings and maximize shareholder value. We remain committed to delivering this value to you, our shareholders, as we continue to drive growth and profitability of our business. It is against this backdrop that I'm also particularly pleased that we're able to inform our shareholders that yet again this year, we're proposing a dividend payment of 25 Kobo per unit of 50 Kobo ordinary share, subject to the approval of shareholders today. We will take more questions on the results in a minute, but allow me to also note other developments in our bank during 2020. We of course saw a number of notable changes. Earlier in the year, we welcomed Mrs. Lola Cardoso and Mr. Joe Mbulu as executive directors in the bank in March. We then in May and in August welcomed two more non-executive directors, Mr. Paul Kokoricha and Mr. Emeka Ogbeche. In October, as you all know, our former director, Mrs. Furera Isma Jamare, resigned from her position as the bank as an independent non-executive director to answer a calling to go and serve her state. We thank her very much for her service to the bank and wish her success. In December 2020, our immediate past chief executive officer, Mr. Emeka Emua, announced his plans to retire from the board and as our chief executive officer, effective on March 31. Of course, this explains why well he's not here today. He has since retired, and we thank him for his contributions to rebuilding our bank and turning it and putting it on a path of profitability. Around the same time that Mr. Emua retired, we also said goodbye to Mr. Kunle Shonola, who also retired from the bank effective 30th March of 2021. We appreciate his contributions to this bank and wish him much success in his uh, next phase. Now with the departure of Mr. Emua, we welcomed Mr. Ekonko, Emeka Ekonko to my right here, who joined the bank in 2013, uh, as you all know, as the head of our corporate bank and investments and treasury who assumed the mantle of leadership of our bank with effect from 1st April 2021. The board and I, and I know all of our shareholders, look forward to seeing the success of, that we will bring to our bank in the years ahead. Finally, thank you for your support. In March 2021, the Central Bank also approved and confirmed my appointment as your board chair. As we look ahead, it is apparent that the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic will linger in 2021 and beyond. However, we have positioned the bank to take advantage of emerging opportunities in, in the economy as we deliver on our vision to be Nigeria's most trusted and reliable partner. We thank you, our dear shareholders, for believing in Union Bank, and we thank you for your continued support and confidence as we continue to work towards delivering shareholder values to the benefit of everybody. I will now turn into, back to the agenda items for us to continue uh, with the formal proceedings of our meeting. Please be informed that in exercise of the powers conferred on me by virtue of section 248 1A of the Companies and Allied Matters Act of 2020, I will be calling for a poll on items one to four of the meeting agenda. The votes for the resolutions being proposed will be taken electronically. I hereby now call on the registrar to explain the operation of the electronic voting pads, which is being handed to each shareholder for voting and to explain the time frame for each voting session. Upon conclusion of each round of voting, the results will be projected on the screen for the benefit of our shareholders and the viewers on the stream feed. 
The resolutions being proposed, of course, as our company secretary explained, are all ordinary resolutions, which means a majority of the shareholders and proxies present, that is 50.1, is required for the resolution to be approved. I now call on the registrar to explain the process. Thank you, Board Chair. We have distributed the electronic voting pads to all shareholders present at this meeting. The voting process will be real-time on the screen. Each voting process takes about 20 seconds. For each of the resolutions we will take, there are three buttons on the electronic voting pad that we're going to use. Numbers one, two, and three. If you're voting in favor of a resolution, you select number one button on the voting pad. That's the number that has a green color code. After selecting your voting pattern, you press the OK button to send in your vote. If you're voting against the resolution, you select the number two button. That's the button with the red color code. Once you select that, you press the OK button to send in your vote. If you're abstaining from the resolution, you select number three button, and you, send, you press the OK button to send in your vote. Thank, Thank you, you very Chair. much. So I will now move to item one on our agenda. Is everybody clear on the instructions? Yeah. Thank you. Item number one on the agenda is to receive and adopt the audited group financial statements for the period ended 31st December 2020, together with the directors, auditors, board appraisers, and statutory audit committee reports therein. The director's report and the consolidated and separate statements of financial position as of 31st December 2020, together with the consolidated and separate statements of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for the year ended on that day have been circulated to members. I now call on Mr. Anthony Oputa of Ernst & Young to read the auditor's report which was made available to members with the audited group financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2020. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. The auditor's report is on pages 54 to 58. Uh, with your indulgence, I'll read excerpts of it and not the entire document, if that is fine. Thank you. Independent auditor's report to the members of Union Bank of Nigeria, PLC, uh, report on the audit of the consolidated and separate financial statements. The opinion. We have audited the consolidated and separate financial statements of Union Bank of Nigeria PLC, the bank, and its subsidiaries together, the group, set out on pages 59 to 180 of this report, which comprises the consolidated and separate statements of financial position as of 31st December 2020, and the consolidated and separate statements of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, the consolidated and separate statement of changes in equity, and the consolidated and separate statements of cash flows for the year then ended, and notes to the consolidated and fin separate financial statements, including a summary of significant accounting policies. In our opinion, the accompanying consolidated and separate financial statement give a true and fair view of the consolidated and separate financial statements of the group and the bank as of 31st December 2020, and their consolidated and separate financial performance and consolidated and separate cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with the International Financial Reporting Standards, IFRSs, and the relevant provisions of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020, the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria Act No. 6, 2011, the Banks and Other Financial Institutions Act 2020, and the various Central Bank of Nigeria guidelines and circulars. Uh, the key headings are basis of opinion, key audit matters. Just to emphasize, key audit matters are those matters that are in our professional judgment we are of most, imp most significant in the audit of the consolidated and separate financial statements of the current period. These matters were addressed in the context of our audit of the consolidated and separate financial statements as a whole, and informing an opinion, therefore. And to emphasize, we do not provide a separate opinion on these matters. For each matter, which is given in the bus to, uh, in the next page, you can see from there. Uh, I'll go straight and talk about the local reporting requirements as uh, legal and other. Uh, 
and that is on page 58. Report on other legal and regulatory requirements. In accordance with the requirements of the Company and Allied Matters Act 2020, we confirm as follows. One, we have obtained all the information and explanations which, to the best of our knowledge, were and our belief were necessary for the purposes of this audit. In our opinion, proper books of account have been kept by the group and the bank insofar as it appears from our examination of those books. Uh, the group and the banks consolidated and separate financial statements of separate statements of financial position and consolidated and separate statements of profit and loss and other comprehensive income are in agreement with these books of accounts. In compliance with the banks and other financial institutions act, CAP B3, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2020, and the circulars issued by the Central Bank of Nigeria, we confirm that one. The information required by the Central Bank of Nigeria Circular BSD slash 1 slash 2004 on insider related credits is disclosed at note, 9, note 49 to this financial statement and also disclosed in note 20 to the consolidated and separate financial statement uh, the various contraventions on certain circulars of the CBN that the bank incurred. Uh, dated 18th March 2021, signed Anthony Okuta on behalf of Ernst and Young and my details uh, in regarding the FRC numbers are on that page. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oputa. In accordance with the provisions of Section 4044 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020, the auditors submitted their report to the Statutory Audit Committee, which also duly examined the report and, being satisfied, rendered the certificate earlier circulated to all shareholders. I now call on Mr. Matthew Akinlade, Chairman of the Statutory Audit Committee, to present the committee's report. Thank you. The Chairman of the Board, Directors, uh, Regulatory Authority hereby present, uh, my colleagues here, others who are here, and those who are watching online, good morning. Um, my name is Matthew Akinlade, the chairman of the Statutory Audit Committee. I hereby present the report of the Audit Committee to the members of UN, uh, Union Bank of Nigeria PSA. In accordance with the provisions of Section 404, Subsection 7, of the Companies and Allied Matters Act of Nigeria 2020. The members of the Statutory Audit Committee of Union Bank of Nigeria PSC hereby report as follows. One, we have exercised our statutory function under Section 404, Subsection 7 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act of Nigeria and acknowledge the cooperation of management and staff in the conduct of these responsibilities. Two, we are of the opinion that the accounting and reporting policies of the bank and group are in accordance with legal requirements and agreed ethical practices, and that the scope and planning of both the external and internal audits for the year ended 31st December 2020 was satisfactory and reinforced the group's internal control system. Three, we are satisfied that the bank has complied with the provisions of Central Bank of Nigeria's circular BSD stroke one, stroke 2004, dated 18th February 2004, on disclosure of insider-related credits in the financial statements of the banks. The balances have been disclosed in note 49 to the financial statement. Four, we have deliberated with the external auditor who has confirmed that necessary cooperation was received from management in the course of this, the statutory audit 
and we are satisfied with management's responses to the external auditor's recommendations on accounting and internal control matters and with the effectiveness of the bank's system of accounting and in internal control. Signed by me, Matia Kilade, on the 17th February 2021. Other members of the Statutory Audit Committee are uh, Dr. Marcel Ujinka, representing Shiaoda, Mrs. Obafunke Alade Adeyefa, representing the board, Mrs. Isma Furera Jumari, representing the board, Mr. Adeolu Akisaya, representing shareholders, Mr. Emeka Ugeche, representing the board. Thank you. Very much. Thank you, Mr. Akinladi. Clause 2.8 of the Central Bank of Nigeria's Code of Corporate Governance for Banks and Discount Houses in Nigeria requires an annual Board of Directors review or appraisal, and the consultant's report thereon is also required to be presented at the annual general meeting and to the Central Bank of Nigeria. DCSL Corporate Services Limited appraised the board and, uh, and, of course, the directors, and being satisfied, rendered a report already circulated to shareholders in the annual report, which you will see in the document. I now call on Mr. Ibrahim Alagbe to read the board appraisal report, which was already made available to shareholders, along with the audited group financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2020. Consultants. I'll be doing, reading our report on page 53 of the annual report. This is a copy services limited was engaged by Union Bank of Nigeria PLC to carry out an appraisal of the board's performance for the year ended December 31st, 2020, in line with the provisions of section 2.8.3 of Central Bank of Nigeria Code of Corporate Governance for Banks in Nigeria, section 14.1 of the Nigerian Code of Corporate Governance and Section 9 of the SEC Corporate Governance Guidelines. The appraiser entailed a review of the bank's corporate and statutory documents, the minutes of board and committee meetings, policies and other auxiliary documents made available to us. We also administered electronic surveys and conducted interviews with the directors to ascertain the level of the board's compliance with corporate governance practices benchmarking the provisions of the CBN Code, NCCG, and SCCG. Our appraiser covered the following seven key corporate governance themes. One, board structure and composition. Two, strategy and planning. Three, board operations and effectiveness. Four, measuring and monitoring of performance. Five, risk management and compliance. Six, corporate citizenship. And seven, transparency and disclosure. We also conducted an evaluation of the performance of the board committees and confirmed that the committees continue to operate effectively within their clearly documented mandates. Following a review of the policies and processes put in place by the board, we confirmed that the board of directors is committed to ensuring best corporate governance practices and adherence to the principles enshrined in the CBN Code, NCCG, and the CCG, CSCGG, as well as globally accepted best practices. Furthermore, we confirm that the board is committed to setting the pace for the enthronement of the highest ethical standards and transparency in the conduct of the bank's business. The peer review and assessment indicate that individual directors remain committed to delivering on their duties and responsibilities, as well as enhancing the bank's growth. Our key findings and recommendations are contained in our detailed report. Yours faithfully, signed BCADME, Managing Director, DCSF Corporate Services Limited. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Labu. Dear shareholders, I now lay before you the annual report and the audited group financial statements for the financial year 
ended 31st December 2020 and will be pleased to answer any questions relating thereto before we proceed to the next agenda item. We will take questions from shareholders, to en but however, to ensure that we give the right answers, we ask you to please refer to the page of the annual report and the financial statement to which your question relates. And then I also enjoin you to be brief in your comments and restrict questions to one or two in order to give other shareholders opportunity to speak. And we will take as many questions as possible, then we will answer them in order. With that in mind, let me start with the first hand that I saw. So.
response to me uh, has been saying that we should emulate Cephalax and the Tampote uh, cement, who are having 50% of the directors as independent. Uh, perhaps uh, for Cephalax, because they have dual leasing and the requirement I also want to uh, commend you on the results. We uh, PBT of 25.4 billion. Uh, though so, uh, it's not up to what we expect, but uh, we ha it has increased uh, by 3%. And given the COVID-19 uh, uh, situation, uh, I think um, I will say you have well. But um, I would like to uh, believe, or I would like to call on you to ensure that we improve on our profitability uh, this financial year. Um, also, uh, our um, operating expenses, OPEX, has gone up by 10%. I think, Chairman, Chairperson, this is uh, where I should pay attention. We must reduce our uh, OPEX to the barest uh, uh, minimum. Um, also, our NPL ratio, I want to commend the bank. Uh, it has reduced from 5.8% to 4%. And uh, this is very encouraging. Uh, what has been uh, killing banks today is the issue of uh, uh, impairment, uh, non-performing uh, loans, and so on. And I think um, in this regard, uh, you have done very well. Uh, if you happen to reduce it further, we will commend you more uh, next uh, year. Uh, I'm happy also that our CAR uh, of 17.5% is quite adequate, much higher than the 10% uh, required by the regulators. Uh, this is also uh, commendable. Now, I want to take you to page 14. And uh, I, I want to put this question to the uh, auditors. Uh, shouldn't we comply with uh, regulation of IFRS? If we have to, why are we using b the word balance sheet on that page, which is no longer uh, required uh, in the I I IFRS uh, regulation? Uh, I think uh, these accounts w would be going to places, and uh, for Union Bank, we shouldn't have anything that will show that uh, we are not really uh, conversant with the terms uh, of uh, IFRS. Um, then I also want to take you to page 26, uh, and this is on the board committees. Uh, I think, you know, strategy is really very crucial to the success of uh, any organization. And I think, uh, Chairman, you must emphasize strategy in all what you are doing. So uh, you should rename to me the Finance Committee to Strategy Finance and uh, General Purposes uh, Committee. Uh, this will uh, make the board to make sure that strategy is discussed at uh, every uh, board uh, meeting. Uh, on page um, 53, um, okay, I have spoken about um, uh, the uh, okay, DCSL. Now, you are supposed to review, evaluate we are, uh, the board we are paying you money. Now, you see, we have seen what has happened recently in First Bank. And we don't want it to happen in other banks. It is not happening here as far as... Uh, from what I have seen uh, in the accounts. But we need you now to include this issue of uh, non-performing loan in your report. 
Uh, if we go to page 134, Chairman, look at the insider-related credits. We have our past directors who are having non-performing loan on our accounts. Uh, this is not good for our company. And as a result of this, I think, Chairman, I'm advocating that from now on, please, let any director you bring, you should not allow them to take loan from this bank. We are tired. It is ruining our, our, our business. Look at what happened in, in, in Sky Bank and so on. If CBN has not been able to come up with a rule to stop directors borrowing from the bank they are directors, I think you can do it for us. You know, the, what has happened in the past, it has happened. But we can protect our investment, we can protect our depositors. By now, the board can make a rule. If you are credit worthy, go to First Bank, go to Access, go to any other bank, not Union Bank. But people will be appointed as directors in a bank. The first thing they are thinking now is how to take loan. And this is happening mostly with the non executive directors. So I think uh, uh, you will do well if you now make this rule. If you cannot even stop them from borrowing, make sure you protect us by ensuring that it is adequately secured. And for every uh, AGM now we come to, we will now make sure that we discuss the issue of insider-related credits. Uh, the chairman of the audit committee is here. I think you should include in your report going forward the issue of insider related when you are reporting to us because you are representing us. Otherwise, um, we will make sure that we don't uh, re-elect you. Chairman, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and I wish the bank very well and I'm happy that you have done well for this financial year but we need more from you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for those questions and comments. We will address them shortly but uh, they're all well noted. Yes, in front. Distinguished Chairman of the Board of Directors, our brand new MD, other directors here present and those watching at home, distinguished shareholders, good morning. My name is Chief Innocent Peters from World Culture. I'm privileged to be here. I happen to be one of the past chairmen of the audit committees of this great bank. So I'd like to thank God Almighty for making it possible for those of us who are here to listen to the good news the bank has to give us. And to also say that we have done well as a people. Um, first, I'd like to join my brother, Dr. Farouk, in thanking Emeka, who is outgone, and welcome Emeka, who is now with us, our CEOs of our great bank. During Emoa's regime, it was war. And thank God we've won without shooting a gun. That is getting the bank repositioned appropriately. And uh, I also want to say that because our president Emeka was part of the battle, he knows what to do at any point in time. What I can really say is that you have a maximum support as shareholders because the only way to go is forward for Union Bank. I'd like to also recall the fact that perhaps there was a roadmap set by the board, which I will call the board that has added a lot of value to what we are discussing today. That roadmap has been adhered to strictly because if it wasn't adhered to, we wouldn't be coming from where we were 
to now where we have to pay dividend for the first time after 10 years last year. And the issue is that sustainable dividend payment is a hallmark of board performance. And we are sure that this board will do even better than that, copying from Dr. Farouk. But I can't but step a little to say, welcome, Madam Chairman. Um, this is very innovative and very good for us to have a mother to chair our great bank. And from the, the little we have heard from you and the way you have gone so far handling the meeting, we have confidence that you are going to do even better than we have seen today. God will be your strength Thank always. You. Thank you, Shareholders. Thank you. I'd like to thank the board and management for the way we have performed under COVID-19, especially the measures taken to mitigate the effects of COVID-19. It takes a fortright board to mobilize staff, 3,000 and more, to look forward to getting other people to benefit in time of the pandemic. To the extent that staff were mobilized, about 10 million naira was raised from our staff. The greatest asset any organization will have is its staff strength. And the same staff have realized that it is good to realize that there are people in majority areas of this country, from the sea geopolitical zones of this country, whom you provided water for. And they were part of this business. And if you didn't teach them how to do it, they wouldn't do it. If they were not obedient, they wouldn't comply. The bottom line is that for you to have done that and much more in this very um, uh, statement you have given us, we know that this country has a lot of future. And God will bless you in achieving that in the name of Jesus. I'd like to say that in our branches, I'm talking from the whole of Abuja, knowing what it used to be those days, how people perceive the Union Bank as a bank you will have to go with your mat to go and sleep, to what it has become today, having been properly rebranded. If you go to Union Bank branches all over the country today, you'll be proud to be a shareholder of Union Bank. I know we can do more, but that is telling the, the people at the apex to realize that it's important to continue to maintain the, task to, the status quo as it is now. We are the, the best bank anybody can think of. I'm not talking about the two Naira 70 Kubus and it paid. I know we'll get there. But because we are coming from somewhere that is so rugged, and for us to be able to stabilize at this point, where we are paying as much as 25 kobo in our second year, I do know that the issue of two naira will come when it comes. So confirmation of our directors, especially the MD and our chairman, is another milestone so, uh, from this bank. Realizing what is happening in other areas, where board is being sad because of what Dr. Farouk talked about. Our own confirmation was expressed. That shows that we are doing what we are supposed to do. A very good and perfect succession plan is in place. And I do know that at the end of the day, we will be better on for it. I don't want to take all the time of our people because in terms of operations, we are wonderful. And I know the profit as if we take care of the uh, cost of doing business which went higher. I know the cost must be identified and nipped on the board. But I do want to believe that our staff is, remains our strength. And what you are doing to our staff, we will urge you and support you to continue to do because at the end of the day, the bank will be better for it. Thank you for listening to me and I wish us well and the wonderful AGM. Thank, Thank you very you much. Thank you very much. All right. I'll come to you, but let me you next, madam, and then okay. you next. Okay. Um, it's in the order of the, uh, the way I saw hands go up. And then I'll come to you. Thank you, madam. Good morning, Mr. Sherman. Oh, I mean, share person. <laughs> <Good morning. laughs> My other directors, both executives and non-executive directors, my co-shareholders and regulatory authorities here present, good morning. My name is Mrs. Bisi Bakari. Much has been said by the earlier speaker, so I'm going to be very brief. I will go straight to page seven of the annual report and accounts. 
uh, I congratulate the entire board and management for the excellent results we are considering today. Our bank has done very well. This is a very good result. Look at our footprints. They look good. That is wonderful. Our profit before tax increased by 3% from 24.7 billion to 25.4 billion in the current year. Our total asset for the bank gear up by 21% from 1.711 trillion to 2.1 trillion. Our customer deposits also moved from 886.3 billion in 2019 to over 1 trillion. That is uh, 1.1311 trillion in 2020. This is about 28% increase. Also, our non performing loans significantly reduced uh, ratio reduced to 4% against 5.8% recorded in 2019. I really commend our bank that despite the COVID-19 pandemic, our profit before tax continue to rise and our non-performing loan ratio continue to reduce, which shows improvements in lenders' asset quality despite our increase in exposure in oil and gas. I give kudos to the entire board and management for this excellent result. Please let us give them a very sound round of applause for this great achievement. Also, our total adequacy ratio of 17.5% is above the regulatory requirements. This indicates that our bank capital position remains strong as ever. Again, uh, we thank the board and management for giving us 25 cover dividend. Not only that, we are getting the dividend today. That means the cash is there. I say thank you to the entire board for that also. Page 10, where we have community support. I sincerely commend our bank for their corporate citizenship initiatives to support individual businesses and communities where they operate in order to help navigate their ongoing fight against COVID-19 pandemic through one, donations of over 350 million Fund for private sector collusion against COVID-19. Two, through the Union Rights Challenge, which was launched in June 2020, whereby our bank awarded 15 million to 90 winners for the period of just four weeks. Again, Employee Volunteer Day 2020, whereby over 3,000 employees donated minimum of 1,000 naira for the gift of uh, water. These initiatives by the board and executive management is highly commendable. Furthermore, I also commend our bank that 94% of our banking transactions now done digitally, compared to 89% in 2019. This is also commendable. Page 14 to 15. I want to especially appreciate the rollout plans on key priorities for the year 2021 by our managing director. This is commendable. <laughs> but I want to ask Mr. Emeka Okonko, we are in the fifth month of the year now. How far about the business priorities, especially the one that has to do with looking for opportunities beyond banking, as the pandemic has shown us that there is urgent need for businesses to diversify into some other areas to increase our income. Also, I want to know from uh, our bank whether we are going in the direction of becoming an old, old co company. I would like to know if there is any plan towards that. Page 56. Page 56 on the uh, external auditor key audit matters. Ma, matter with respect to litigation valued at 7.32 trillion against 6.95 trillion in 2019. I'm worried about the amount involved in the litigations. Therefore, I want to know what is the situation on our pending appeals on the judgment by the Federal High Court. 
Furthermore, the debt to equity ratio of 99.27% against 60.62% in the pre previous year is of great concern to me also. So I want to ask, what is the management is doing in this regard? Also, what is the management doing to reduce the growth in cost to income ratio of 75.4% against 74.1% in 2019, which increases marginally as a result of increase in total expenses by 10.5%. What is the management doing to contain this? Furthermore, I want to ask that how far have we gone on our divestment from UBM UK subsidiary? I want to know also. Page 136. Looking at this page, I think we need to watch some of our expenses and costs. Our other operating expenses moved from 29.9 billion to 38.2 billion. Also, our general, general administrative expenses moved from 2.7 billion to 6.4 billion. We need to look at this. Lastly, I want to uh, welcome Mr. Emeka Okonko as the new Chief Executive Officer. I hope you continue on the strong foundation laid by the former CEO, Mr. Emeka Emua. I wish you a successful tenure. Thank you for the opportunity given to me to be here today. Thank you all. Thank you very much for those questions, please. Uh, the board chairman, the members of Union Bank PSC, the executive management, the regulatory authority, my name's, I am Chief Olatunde Okelana Balogun Olugma of Olilegma. I'm also a Justice of Peace for Moyo State. My chairman, I want to congratulate all of us seated here today for one thing. Last year was not like this. It's getting better. And I pray by the grace of God, it will be more better than this next year. But I won't continue without mentioning something. Union Bank is only public company, PLC, banking sector, that used their beautiful discretion of invitation of shareholders this week, this, this year, by rotation. I am so happy with the company secretary and the board giving him the, to use his discretion by inviting some of us that were not here last year. Could you believe other public company like Union Bank does not follow suit? They still, they are very stereotype. And I'm happy for Union Bank. Please give them a very round of applause. <laughs> Having said that, madam, I want to congratulate you again for the approval of your person by the CBN, the power that have been, the regulators. And I want us to really show our appreciation to Emeka Emowa. It will be, it will not be an overstatement if we are pulling our eloquence to him to thank him for what he has done. I'm so happy to be a shareholder of Union Bank. I will tell you why. We thank of, in terms of re innovation, reformation, and transformation of Union Bank. Especially when I enter the building, I'm so amazed. It's only I cannot bring my domicile to this place, but because the, but the place is very good. Having said that, Emeka Okonko, you have stepped into that shoe. As I believe that the shoe will not be too high for you to continue. I want to pray that despite 2020 pandemic worldwide, the challenges of the economic challenges of this country, you were able to pay us 25 kobo. I pray by the grace of God, all of us are shareholder. We pray that after the reconstruction of our shares over the years and waiting, having waited for 10 years, I believe 2021, you make more business. You make more money for us. And your share per henny will increase and things will get better. But I want to tell you something. You made a mistake. I wouldn't say it's a mistake. Uh, the CBN coerced of the banks in Nigeria to donate money for COVID-19. Unfortunately, the money at the helm of affairs, which I wouldn't miss what to say that uh, 
what he did is not in the interest of the shareholders because he donated on the on behalf of the bank debited them before informing them of how much he donated according to their balance sheet the money does not reflect in the economy the 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 poor in this country does not know that you know bank gave as much as 250 million 250 million no, no, no. Let's start from the first one, 250. Another one, 50 to Lagos State. I want to tell you something, Chairman. Your shareholders are also suffering. I remember that some of the companies sent palliative through us to assist the poor in the society among us. They did it. Even those ones that has that they produce Martina, they sent some Martinas to us and they put some smile on, the, on their shareholders. Union Bank should not just rely on government, the politicians of this country. What you are giving to them does not get to them. Let me give you an instance. Having no uh, the order of the board, so no you are, so no be. Anything you ask him to do for shareholders, it always gets to us. And we are very happy about that. But government of the day in Nigeria, they are not like that. The best you could do empower so will be more i took over i took i took a uh, more and uh, so will be with bear me witness after the hgm some of us that were not allowed to be here i you know your brother though we've seen the results but don't be too don't be akagon sometimes when you're supposed to release to assist the poor don't just withdraw everything the shareholders are dealing with this bank for the past 30, 35, 40 years. And Sonobi has always been in charge, even when he was not the company secretary. From uh, the, the first lady, the second one, and the other person. He knows how to reach us. He knows how to get in touch with us. He knows how to appeal to us. And he knows our need. I want everybody here to give him a very good round of applause. Uh, because he knows what to do when need arises. And I want to mention something again, my chairman, on your corporate affairs unit. The, there are certain things they do in the past, in that department, which occasionally they are under the common secretary. I don't know your present, the way you do it now. That shareholders become the public relations officers for the banks without being paid. Of course, what we are paying now is our dividends. There are certain things they do in that department which I want you to look into so that they continue that tradition that we used to know about them. And some of you knows what I'm talking about. And some of them also knows. We are the public listening officers as far as you know bank is concerned. As shareholders, we sell you to the public. And your image is more better than any other banks in Nigeria today. We are very happy about that. But there's another challenge I want shareholders as a group to look at. The issue, because now that you are going to pay dividends, you are going to have a challenge of unclaimed dividends. SEC, I want them to take their pain. Take this question. The issue of uh, EDMMS, is it a cause in Nigeria or a blessing? Is it a fraud or something that will benefit the shareholders? I will tell you why. I got my e mandate from Cardinal, Cardinal Registrar. I take it to the branch of Bumos or Union Bank, Union Bank, Union Bank stamp it and confirm that this account belongs to Okelano Joseph Olakunde. Cardinal is not part of the problem. But when you now take this form to the registrars, this registrar will now pass it through the platform called EDMS. And uh, according, some of them does not know the policy. They didn't read the rules very well. And I want to seek to answer that question. They will charge 161 naira per account. Let's assume, let's assume in a, a Cardinal Stone, I have Okomo, I have Union Bank, I have Union UBM property, about 10 of them. They will not charge 161 naira. It's 150 naira per account, according to them. They will not charge 161. So if you have 10 accounts, you will not pay 1,000 Six or one ten naira. The shareholders are suffering. The aim of this is to confirm that this or account belong to Kelana Joseph Latunde or Bonus or Brandt of Union Bank. And Union Bank managers already signed it. But some 
Cardinal Stone does not do that, but I'm just giving an instance those ones that does not have another way of solving the problem. Because the, there is no way SEC can achieve their aim of unclean dividends in this country when they are creating problems for the small, small shareholders. As a corporate, as a bank, as an entity, at Bankers Committee, let's look at this rule from the SEC. Is it a punishment? Or is, a, is the better way forward? They should answer that question. And I want us to do that so that things will get better for shareholders. Having said that, the issue of director taking loan in the banks is not against the law. The only thing you can do, do your internal mechanism very, very well. You remember where we are coming from. And we thank God for where we are today. Most of this problem were because we have a lot of provisions for bad debts. I don't know how much loan you sold to Hamcon. Hamcon is an entity of government that is slipping from where they did not sow. The shareholders are suffering. The consortium of shares of Union Bank make it like that. But you know one thing? I still thank God for what happened to Union Bank. If it happened in a free bank, I will be happy. So I thank God for Union Bank because God smile on Union Bank, all of us would not lose totally our shares, our investment, and we are very happy. But what you need to do is to make sure the, your tradition of taking good care of your custom, of your staffs, they are the brain behind the bottom line. They are the one that is giving us the beautiful profit. And they are the one that you need to take care of very well. When you, because there are always three partners in progress. The shareholders, the customer, the board, and the management. And I believe that with your appointment as a mother, with Cardoso and all other female on the board, things continue to look up in Union Bank. And I know that by this time next year, we'll be smiling with a better dividends. And I want you to know that all the shareholders will give you support. We we'll give you the maximum support because I can see you are a responsible mother, you are a responsible wife, and you are also a technocrat, and you know, and you are a professional. I thank God for your appointment. And your appointment will continue to be the best that has happened to you, Noba. God bless everybody here, and I pray that this year will be better than today. Thank, Thank you, you for giving me an opportunity. Thank you, Chief. Good morning, Good morning. the board chair, directors, shareholders here, present, and those that are watching us virtually, the regulators here present too. My own name is Eric Akinduro. I'm the chairman of Ibadan Zone Shareholders Association. Uh, firstly, uh, the board chair, we need to appreciate you, and we need to thank everyone that has put what we are considering together this year. You have put your best. And thank God that we are getting out of the bad situation where we found ourselves years ago. And not only that, as the earlier speaker said about Mr. Emeka Emoa, that man came at a critical stage of this bank. And today, we can have a legacy that he has left behind. And one of the challenges of a leader is when you get in at a tough time. How do you do it? What do you leave behind? And this man has led, left a legacy. And thank God, one maker is going, another maker is coming. The only difference is Emoa and Okonko. And I believe that the one that is coming has been with us for a long time and is ready to give value to our investment. Because only what we know as shareholders is when you give value to our investment so that we can be happy. When you are not giving value to our investment, you are not performing. And I believe that the incoming GMD will give value to our investment. Um, I noticed something on page 10. I wouldn't have mentioned it, but I think it's worthy of noting because it deals with figure. When you look at page 10 
and page 14 on our financial scorecard. The typographical error there was a little bit great. Number three, the bank reached a major milestone as customer deposit crossed the one trillion mark, growing by 28 percent to one one three one point one billion from 886.3 billion. I realized that this was a typographical error. Should be trillion. Yes. So we need to take note of that. And also, Madam Chair, uh, as people said this morning, we shareholders, we have waited a long time. We have waited so much a long time, and the dividend we are getting today is not the best for us. But we are managing it because we know where we are coming from. And we believe that we are going to a higher ground. So the dividend we are giving us today is not the best, but we are managing it. And also, they've talked about the financial highlights. I don't want to bother ourselves about that. I want to see, uh, I want to go to page 132, note B, on our digital banking and e-business. As of today, we have act as at the time of this report, I believe it must have been more than that now, we have about 27,700 users just from 25,000 users in the previous year. And when you look at the breakdown, you can see that uh, our ATM not on us, we have 3.6 billion, POS, we have a higher number, e-card machine, online transfer, and so on and so forth. So we can see that gradually, gradually, we are growing our e-business. But we need to do more, Madam Chair, because when you look at the whole scenario, what the economy went through about two, a year ago, we can realize that nobody ever envisaged it, but it just came. And thank God, I, I used to say that one of the challenges or the attribute of a leader is to seek challenges before they become problem. And thank God that we have seen it, and we are working towards it, and thank God that Union Bank is on top of it. But we need to do more on our e-banking. Very, very important. The number we recorded here is not too good for us. So let us do more so that we can, we can get more on our e-banking and our digital business. And also on page 133, where we have our other operating income. I noticed something there on note 3. Note 13, I mean, on page 133, we have gains on disposal of property and equipment to the tune of 1.3 billion. We need to know these properties that were disposed as shareholders so that we don't go and trespass into another man's property next time that this is the property of Union Bank, not knowing that it has been disposed. So we can have the idea of the properties that has been disposed so that we can, we, we can know. And also on note B of the same page, we have proceeds from disposers. Proceeds from disposers, 4.9 billion. And we have disposal cost of 4.1 billion. I continue to imagine when we dispose assets, we have proceeds of 4.9 and we have the cost of 4.1 billion. So I need more clarification on this. Why do we have so much high cost of that disposal? And not only that, when you look at page 136, page 136, our length and rate move from 95 million to 545 million. We have so much sharp increase in our length and rate during the year on page 136. So I want us to watch it and if you can have better explanation on why we have so much high sharp rate on that uh, rent and rate for the year. And also, Madam Chair, page 94, page 94, where we have our loans and concentration by sector. In view of the past experience, one thing that history taught us is that it teaches you not what to take to the future. But I can see that our oil and gas sector, we still have so much concentration in that line. And when you look at what the oil and gas 
how it's performing recently is not too much reliable. We recorded a lot of non-performing loans in that aspect. So we need to consider our concentration on oil and gas. Ag agriculture, you know Bank is known as one of the best bank that supported agriculture in the olden days. And I believe we still believe in this. You can still support agriculture. When you look at the economy, economy is channel everybody to agriculture now. So I will advise if we can do more on agriculture and manufacturing so that we can keep the economy going. On pages 55 and 56, pages 55 and 56, we have our key audit matter. Gross balance of loan and advances to customers was 736.7 billion from 595.3 billion in 2019. And when you look at the total percentage of this, it's about 35% of our total assets. We need to watch this because the impairment and the non-performing loan, although we are breaking it down, but when you look at our economy today, the high rate of inflation, and not only that, as at March, I think the inflation rate is about 18.7%. So the inflation is very high. And when an economy is having a high rate of inflation, payment of loans will be very difficult. So I want us to consider how we give our loan so that uh, we can continue to have a lesser non-performing loans every year. On page 174 and 175, 174 and 175. We have transaction with key management personnel. Union Bank Property Company PSC. I want us, I need update on our relationship with uh, Union. Although we see our subsidiary, but we need update on that. And not only that, non-performing loan of our former directors Neutral chemicals in line with recent Amcon bill passed recently. That loan is not performing. And when you look at the, uh, the, uh, the, the bill passed by Amcon of recent, I mean by Zenit on Amcon of recent, that you can go ahead to acquire more of the voters' properties apart from their collaterals. So I don't know what we are doing. Are we still going to keep this as non performing? or we would work on that bill so that we can get loans payable from a motor chemicals. And I want to have more information on our relationship with Union Bank UK because we are, we, it was published recently that we are divesting from that and I can still see that we still have some business relationship with them. So I want to know more on that. And Going to the final stage on page 135. Page 135. We have share based payment arrangements. In 2014, shareholders gave approval to the board on this initial share capital representing about 3% of our authorized share capital to fund an employee share incentive scheme. And during the year under review, Madam Chairman, I read it in the annual report that we have about 51.4 million units was awarded to key management personnel of the bank under this scheme. My question now is that the approval was given that shares should be given to all, share, all staff. Why are we giving it to key personnel management alone? Why are we not extending it to all other staff of the bank? so that they too can enjoy from what the shareholders has approved for them. Finally, Madam Chair, I'm using this opportunity to call on CBN, because when I look at our Amcon subcharge of 0.5% of our total assets, I can see that it's very high. Not only Union Bank, all banks. They are charging them 0.5% of their total assets. Why? Just to stabilize fund. They said a bank sector stabilization fund. And when you look at the, these charges, 
vis a vis our capital, our bank adequacy ratio, which the CBN is taking. And the essence of that adequ bank adequacy ratio is, to, is for us to guide against unforeseen issues that can put banks into a problem. So why are they still charging us with this stabilization fund again to stabilize bank when we have adequate bank ratio that we are keeping with CBN? So I'm imploring the CBN and other regulators to consider this 0.5% of our total asset is a very is on very high side and it's affecting the bottom line and at the end of the day the shareholders we are not getting so much after all this has been done. Likewise, the unclaimed dividend. Recently, the C the, it came out that six years, any dividend that was not claimed will be taken over by the unclaimed dividend trust fund. I'm telling us that we need to do more. We need to create an enabling environment for our shareholders to get their dividend, not to claim, not to put their dividends on, on trust fund. Enlightenment, the grassroots shareholders, some of them are suffering. And they don't know that they have this share. They don't, they, don't, they don't know that they have this unclaimed dividends. So the best thing which I believe a reasonable and a responsive government should do is to create an enabling environment for people to be aware and to make it easier for them to claim their dividends so that they will get their dividends. At the end of the day, what is going to remain as unclaimed dividends will be unattractive. But government is not doing that. Taking over unclaimed dividends, that's not the best. I believe that our government will consider this and create an enabling environment for shareholders to get their dividend rather than taking it over. Once again, and I appreciate you for this opportunity given to me. And I pray that next year, when we'll be celebrating the 53rd annual general meeting, shareholders will be smilier than the way we are smiling this year. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you very much. Any other questions before we, maybe I'll take one more. Yes. Okay, good. No more. Thank you. So I will I appreciate that. I'll now hand over to Emeka to attempt to go through the questions and of course we're here to provide any further clarity. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, good afternoon uh, directors of the bank, shareholders and all the other stakeholders here. We thank you for being here with us today. First, I note with humility that this is the first time that I'm addressing all of you being in front of you today. So I want to uh, appreciate that and thank you all very much for the support and the encouragement I've received from you over the years. Thank you very much for that. So let me go into uh, the comments that were raised. Some of them were comments, uh, so no need to respond to that. Some are questions uh, which I'll respond to. I I've tried to. Uh, get them into bucket so I don't begin to repeat myself. So uh, please bear with me. Uh, and if I uh, miss out on any, uh, please feel free to reach out to us and we will take time to ensure that we give you the right answer. So first, let me start with the points uh, that are positive uh, that you made about the bank, for which we thank you very much. On the uh, profitability, the performance, we are happy to uh, do that, and it's just the tonic we need to continue to do more on the uh, improvement in the MPL ratio, the capital adequacy ratio, the status of the branches, and of course, how the bank handled the COVID situation and supported the community uh, while doing that. We thank you for those words of encouragement, and uh, we commit to continue to keep our eyes on that so that uh, you will continue to see more of those. So let me uh, spend a little time on some of the questions that, that, that were raised or things that required a response. The first being on the uh, uh, equity base and the need to ensure that we keep an eye on that to um, ensure that we have enough capital to continue to run the business. Let me assure you that this is uh, something that we hold uh, very close to our heart. We always review our capital plan just to make sure that in addition to the need to continue to return dividends to you, that we ensure that the business has enough capital to continue to run profitably and robustly. So please be assured that we have that uh, in focus. The point on uh, women on the board uh, is very well noted. I think the fact that uh, our chairman is here is enough proof of how uh, much we pay attention to that. So I can assure you that 
this is something that we continue to look into, not only at the board level, but at the staff level. Today, I think um, the ratio is about 45 to 65, and we started uh, much lower mm -hmm. for women. So mm -hmm. we have set targets in that direction, and I can assure you that we are continuing to mm -hmm. you know, work towards that. In terms of the operating expenses that was mentioned, yes, we noticed there has been some uh, increases there. Those were largely due to um, the regulatory charges, uh, the uh, surcharges to uh, the regulation for both our asset book and our liability book. And that reflected more the growth we've seen in those areas. The growth of our liability book is in the neighborhood of 1.4 trillion naira and the asset book. So we continue to do that. Uh, another um, line that's important is the monies we spend on IT to ensure that those uh, services that people enjoy continue to be rendered to them in a cost-effective manner. So these are more like investments. Uh, the detail there is that uh, some of those are, are foreign currency related expenses, and being that there has been some devaluation, of course, it's show through. So we'll continue to manage those, but our biggest response to that is to ensure that those investments are made in such a way that they yield more return so that you will not see only the impact of those expenses, you will see their returns on our top line. Mm -hmm. So that is what we will continue to do. Um, on the insider-related loans, um, yes, there are a few of them. Those were loans that were done very much in the past. And it's such that even when uh, the person who is on the board of uh, either the bank or the company involved is no longer there, it will continue to show. But let me assure you that uh, we do those loans uh, in full compliance with the policy, and we continue to monitor those loans to ensure that uh, their quality remains good and robust, mm -hmm. knowing that uh, also there are limits that are set uh, regulatorily for those loans. So this is something that we have very much in focus. A few comments on uh, the UBUK uh, subsidiary was made. Yes, indeed, there was an announcement that we have uh, put a process in place to divest fully from that subsidiary, mm. or that branch actually is a branch. Um, that process did not succeed. It fell through because uh, the party that was uh, online to uh, basically uh, take over that branch, uh, it didn't work. They didn't meet the terms of the SBA. So we have started a new process uh, with a few people involved, and we are looking to conclude that divestment towards the end of the year. You know that these things also require the approval of both the regulator here and in the UK. Mm. So there are those dependencies in terms of timeline, but this is something that we have a family in focus. There was also the comment about uh, the litigation we have, uh, the one that is uh, in the, uh, we appealed uh, the ruling of the appeal court. Uh, we have that uh, going, uh, the way it should, we do not uh, envisage that uh, it will not go in our favor. We have a good team of uh, legal representatives who are looking after that, and we will continue to manage those cases just to ensure that the outcome is one that we desire. So please be assured that uh, we have that family focus. I've talked about uh, the cost to income ratio. Uh, the whole co route is not. We continue to uh, basically review how we uh, are configured in line with what we need. So if we need to go the whole core route, these considerations are ongoing, and if there's enough imperative to do that, we will do that. But for today, we are focused on the branch configuration, and that is where we are today, and we will continue to review as the uh, environment changes, as our imperatives change, and as the opportunities evolve. Um, the point on uh, some of the properties disposed, I don't have the details, but we can uh, basically get this and um, um, provide those. Uh, on the rent and rates, yes, uh, we've seen these rates increase on account of basically governments uh, driving for more internally generated revenues. And um, we try to negotiate this, but at the end of the day, uh, we find out that we are paying more than we are doing before. Mm. So that is what is responsible for all that. So that is really uh, that I, it may well be that I have uh, missed uh, one or two points, but I do not mind um, that I get together with the uh, 
person involved or uh, interested to get more facts so that we will uh, give more information. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Konko. Shareholders, thank you for your indulgence. Let me thank each and every one of you for your questions and comments. It shows the level of which you pay attention to what we're doing, and we appreciate it, and always welcome those comments because they help us improve. So with hopefully those questions having been addressed, I will now move in to try and propose the actual resolution for us to pass our, our statements and, and receive them. So I hereby propose that the audited group financial statements for the financial year ended 31st December 2020, together with the directors, auditors, board appraisers, and the statutory audit committee's reports thereon be received and adopted. Would someone please second the motion? Thank you. I hereby put the resolution to the meeting and request that we now vote, and the voting period is 20 seconds. Okay. Once we all get the hang of it, we will do it faster. Please register. Please. Board Chair, for the resolution to receive and adopt the audited group financial statement for the financial year in the 31st December 2020, together with the reports of the directors, auditors, board appraisers, and statutory audit committee there on, the voting can commence now. Thank you. Registrar, please announce the results. Thank you, Bache. For the resolution to receive and adopt the Auditor Group Financial Statements for the financial year in the 31st December 2020, together with the reports of the Directors, Auditors, Board, Appraisal, and Statutory Audit Committee, we have a total of 100% of total vote cast in person at this meeting and by proxy vote in favor of the resolution. Thank you, Bache. Thank you. Following the results announced by the Registrar, I hereby declare that the resolution has been duly carried. I move now to agenda item number two, and that is the declaration of dividends. I hereby propose that a dividend payment in the sum of seven billion three hundred and sixteen million one hundred and twenty one thousand two hundred and thirteen naira fifty kobo translating to 25 kobo per 50 kobo ordinary share of the company subject to withholding tax be paid on tuesday 4th may 2021 to shareholders whose names appear in the register of members at the close of business on 31st march 2021 b and is hereby approved will someone please second yes chief i second that one chief on of your plan. thank you chief I will now put this resolution to a vote and request that the voting commence. Mr. Register. Thank you, Board Chair. For the resolution to declare a dividend for the financial year in the 31st December 2020, the voting process can commence. Registrar, please announce results. Thank you. For the resolution to declare a dividend for the financial year in the 31st December 2020, we have a total of 100% of total vote cast in person at this meeting and by proxy vote in favor of the resolution. Thank you. Following the results announced by the registrar, I hereby declare that the resolution has now been duly carried. I will now move on to the next set of resolutions, which are for the election of directors. Because it is directors, this time I'll be requesting someone to move and someone to second. So let me start um, with those sets of resolutions. As required um, by the codes of corporate governance in Nigeria, the profiles of directors who are retiring at this meeting by law are provided on pages 18 to 24. 
of the annual reports. Uh, and since they're retiring, we are putting them up for re-election. Mr. Shonubi, I shall now call on the secretary to list their names. The directors, the following directors retire at this annual general meeting, being the first annual general meeting since their appointment. Mr. Paul Kukurija and Mr. Omega Kukwit. In line with the Corporate Affairs Commission's approval to hold this meeting by proxies, the election of the retiring directors will be taken by individual votes. Now, would someone please rise and propose a motion for the election of Mr. Paul Kukurija? Yes, doctor? Yeah, I vote that motion in uh, Thank you very much. May I have a second? Yes, Mr. Eric. Thank you very much. Mr. Registrar, I will now put that motion to a vote and request that the voting begin. Thank you, Board Chair. For the resolution to elect Mr. Paul Kokorich as a director, voting can start now. Register, please announce the results. For the resolution to elect Mr. Paul Kokorich as director, we have a total of 100% of total vote cast in person at this meeting and by proxy, vote in favor of the resolution. Thank you. Following the results announced by the registrar, I hereby declare that the motion has now been duly carried. Would someone now please rise and propose a motion for the election of Mr. Emeka Ogbeche? Thank you. I so do. Thank you very much. Any second? I yes, Chief. Second that motion. Thank you, Chief. I hereby put the motion to the meeting and request that we now vote on that motion. Thank you, Board Chair. For the resolution to elect Mr. Emeka Ogbechi as a director, the voting process can commence. Register, please announce the results. Thank you, Board Chair. For the resolution to elect Mr. Emeka Ogbechi as director, we have a total of 100% of total vote cast in person at this meeting and by proxy vote in favor of the resolution. Thank you. Following the results announced by the registrar, I hereby declare that the motion has also been duly carried. Uh, thank you. I will now move on to re election of directors. The next item on the agenda uh, is the re-election of our directors. As required by the Code of Corporate Governance in Nigeria, the profiles of these directors retiring by rotation at this meeting are on pages 18 to 24 of the annual report and accounts. I shall now call on the secretary to read their names. The names of the directors who retire and seek re-election pursuant to Article 90 of the Communist uh, Articles of Association are as follows. Mr. Richard Borat, Mrs. Omolola Kadoso, Mr. Tayamo Labib, and Mr. Mark Patterson. Thank you. In line with the Corporate Affairs Commission's approval to hold this meeting by proxies, the election of these retiring directors will be taken by individual votes. May I ask someone to please rise and move for the re-election of Mr. Richard Borat? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Any seconds? I second that motion, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Okay, I will now put the motion to the meeting and request that we vote now. Thank you, Board Chair. For the resolution to re-elect Mr. Richard Barrett as director, voting starts now. Thank you. Register, please announce the results. 
Thank you, Board Chair. For the resolution to re-elect Mr. Richard Barrett as director, we have a total of 100% of total vote cast in person at this meeting and by proxy vote in favor of the resolution. Following the results announced by the registrar, I hereby declare that the motion has been duly carried. Now, would someone please rise and propose a motion for the re-election of Mrs. Omolola Cardoso? Yes, Chief. I rise to propose the election of Mrs. Omolola Cardoso. Thank you. May I have a second? Yes, please. Thank you very much. I hereby put the motion to the meeting and request that we vote now. Thank you, Board Chair. For the resolution to re elect Mrs. Omolola Cardoso as director, voting starts now. Please announce the results. Thank you, Board Chair. For the resolution to re elect Mrs. Omorola Cardoso as director, we have a total of 100% of total vote cast in person at this meeting and by proxy vote in favor of the resolution. Thank you. Following the results announced by the registrar, I hereby declare that the motion has been duly carried. May I now please ask someone to rise and propose a motion for the re election of Mr. Taimo Labib? Yes. I certainly so do. Sure. Thank you. May I request a second? Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Um, I hereby put the motion to the meeting and request that we now vote. Thank you, Board Chair. For the resolution to re elect Mr. Taimo Labib as director, voting starts now. Thank you. Registrar, please announce the results. Thank you, Board Chair. For the resolution to re elect Mr. Taimo Labib as director, we have a total of 100% of total vote cast in person at this meeting and by proxy vote in favor of the resolution. Thank you. Following the results announced by the registrar, I hereby declare that the motion has been duly carried. May I now please ask someone to rise and propose the motion for the election of Mr. Re election of Mr. Mark Patterson? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bakari. Would someone please second? I second that motion. Thank you, Chief. I hereby now put the motion to the meeting and request that we vote now. Thank you, Board Chair. For the resolution to re elect Mr. Mike Patterson as director, voting starts now. Registrar, please announce the results. Thank you, Board Chair. For the resolution to re elect Mr. Mike Patterson as director, we have a total of 100% of total vote cast in person at this meeting and by proxy vote in favor of the resolution. Thank you. Following the results announced by the registrar, I hereby declare that the motion has been duly carried. Thank you very much for your participation in re election of the directors. We will now move on to the next item on the agenda, item four which is fixing the auditor's remuneration. In accordance with section 401.2 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020, the retiring auditor, Mrs. Ernst and Young, are being reappointed without any resolution being passed. But the act requires that the auditor's remuneration be fixed by the company in a general meeting or in such manner as the company in general meeting may determine under section 408 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act. I hereby move as follows, that the directors be hereby authorized to fix the remuneration and expenses of the auditors for the financial year ending 31st December 2021. 
Would someone please rise to second that motion? Chief Walker, I do. Thank you, Chief. I hereby put this resolution to the meeting and request that we vote now. Thank you, Board Chair. For the resolution to authorize the directors to fix the remuneration of the auditor, voting starts now. Please announce the results. Thank you, Board Chair. For the resolution to authorize the directors to fix the remuneration of the auditors, we have a total of 100% of total vote cast in person at this meeting and by proxy vote in favor of the resolution. Thank you. Following the results announced by the registrar, I hereby declare that the resolution has been duly carried. In line with section 238 of Kama 2020, which requires that the disclosure of the remuneration of the bank's managers be made at this meeting. This disclosure is provided in the audited group financial statements for the year ended 31st, 2020, and we kindly refer our shareholders to that for additional information. We will now move on to item number six on the agenda, which is the election of members of the statutory audit committee. In accordance with section 446 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020, the company secretary received names of the shareholders' nominees for election into the Statutory Audit Committee. The shareholders currently on the Statutory Audit Committee are also subject to re-election annually. I now call on the secretary to read the names of the elected shareholders on the Statutory Audit Committee and the names of the new nominees. The shareholders currently on the statutory audit committee and seeking re-election are Mr. Matthew Akinade, Mr. Adeolu Akisan, and Dr. Marcel Ojinka. Pursuant to section 404, subsection 6 of the Common and Allied Matters Act, the following nominations were received within the statutory time limit. Mr. Matthew Akinade, nominated by Mr. Timothy Adishino. Mr. Adeolu Akisan, nominated by Mr. Alaga Kalaole Muftao. Dr. Marcel Ojinka, Ojinka, nominated by Moses, Moses Igube. Mr. Adjani Musa Adekola, nominated by Mr. Bashir Musba of Zalatinde. Mr. Uguni Temitope Kamoru, nominated by Mr. Olale Abdullahi. Mr. Udutola Samson Bankole, nominated by Ms. Mujimi Alice Ai. Mr. Uweye Ulushegun Manuel, nominated by Mr. Romashon Tyro. By virtue of section 249, subsection 3 of the Comes and Allied Matters Act, there shall be no right to demand a poll on the election of members of the Statutory Committee under section 404 of CAMA. Therefore, the current shareholders, representatives on the Statutory Committee are hereby presented for return to this Statutory Audit Committee till the next annual general meeting in line with sections 249, subsection 3 of the Comes and Allied Matters Act. Thank you, Mr. Shonobi. In line with section 404.3 of the Act, the Board of Directors has resolved to appoint two of its members to represent the Board of Directors on the Statutory Audit Committee. The two directors are Mrs. Obafunke Alade Adeyefa and Mr. Emeka Obecho. I hereby now move that Mr. Matthew Akinlade, Mr. Diolo Akinsonya, Mr. Marcel Ojinka, be returned as shareholders' representatives on the Statutory Audit Committee pursuant to Section 404.3 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act until the conclusion of the next annual general meeting, in addition to the following two board nominees, who are Mrs. Oba Funkela de Adeyefa and Mr. Emeka Obweche. Would someone please second that motion? Mm -hmm. yes. uh, sir, yeah, before I second the motion, I want you to confirm to us that we are complying with the FRC regulations that one of the uh, all these committee members is a minor. Um, distinguished uh, shareholder, Mr. Um, Matthew Akiladi is a fellow of the Chartered Institute of the 
This is a channel that comes out of Nigeria. Okay. With that information, I move the motion that we elect uh, them, we elect them as members of the organization. Thank you very much, Doctor. So, with that second, uh, would those in favor of the motion please signify by raising their hands? <laughs> Thank you. And if there's anyone against that motion, can you raise your hand? Okay. I hereby declare then that that motion has also been duly carried. Now, this concludes the ordinary business of the day, but I wanted to take one moment to actually give an update, especially in light of uh, Dr. Farouk's question around the independent directors. We're actually quite pleased to inform our shareholders that we have indeed identified an independent uh, director who is now following our processes with the central bank will be announced in due course. So stay tuned. <laughs> so the board of directors uh, would like to inform our shareholders that the approval of director's remuneration is outside the scope of this meeting as prescribed by the Corporate Affairs Commission because it is a special business. However, we still want to make sure that our shareholders are aware that the director's remuneration for the financial year 31st December 2021 shall be the same as that of since December uh, 2019. So it has not changed. That's good. Don't sacrifice. <laughs> so with that, our shareholders, I would like to thank each and every one of you, our distinguished shareholders and ladies and gentlemen present here today, for coming here to join us and for your support uh, through the past years. We look forward to continuing to engage you in the coming year and to meeting again when we get together for our next AGM. I now declare the meeting closed. Thank you. Thank you.